the very last day of this millennium. And it could just turn out to be my favorite. Tilda's been smiling ever since she woke up this morning. Makes Timmy nervous. <laughs> oh, relax, doll face. Everything's going like clockwork. In only a few hours, our nemesis will be history. <laughs> what makes Tabitha so sure that tonight is journey Miguel's last night on Earth? Because my book predicted that someone will kick the bucket tonight. Now that I've convinced Grace Bennett to allow Charity out of the house to go to the dance with Miguel, she'll be a sitting duck. Tabitha's going to shoot Charity? Oh, please, Timmy, give me some credit. This is the eve of the new millennium. I have something much more creative in mind. <laughs> but Tabitha still hasn't gotten her evil powers back. <sighs> no problem. <laughs> Do you remember when Alice ticked off the Queen of Hearts in Alice in Wonderland? She was mad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Indeed, she was, Timmy. <laughs> And what did she say? Off for the head! Off for the head! <laughs> <laughs> you mean... That's right, Tim Tim. Tonight, I'm going to finish off charity the old-fashioned way. I'm going to behead her. <laughs> I can't believe Aunt Grace let me come tonight. She surprised me, too. She's never let Kay go out on New Year's. That's why we always hung out and played computer games. Well, maybe you'd rather be doing that tonight. Are you kidding? I'd rather be with you than anything else in the world. <laughs> as long as I live, I will never understand what he sees in her. It could be that she's one of those natural beauties, or that... She's never had a mean thought in her entire life. Or that long blonde hair. Or oh, shut up, Simone. Well, you asked me anyway. You shouldn't be staring at them. All you're doing is torturing yourself, which isn't going to get you anywhere. Now that's where you're wrong. Charity better enjoy your time with Miguel today, because by midnight, he's going to be staring into my eyes and not hers. How many times have I heard that before? You don't believe it? OK. If Miguel isn't with me by midnight tonight, I will give up on him forever. Triple swear. Hand me that red wig. Thank you. You know, how can you be so calm when your life is going to end the second you walk into that fancy restaurant tonight and see Ethan and Gwen? Don't be so dramatic, Whitney. Me? No, no, no. You are the drama queen, OK? What are you going to do when Ethan and Gwen find out that this boyfriend of yours doesn't even exist? That Ethan's the guy you've been in love with all this time? What do you want me to do? Go crazy? You know what? This might actually be one time when going a little crazy would be appropriate. You know you're doomed, right? Oh, Katrina Whitney, fate is on my side. Ethan and I are meant to be together. I'll never marry Gwen. So... Then you're getting engaged tonight. Hangs on your meeting of this boyfriend of Teresa's. Mm. You've got it. Once Gwen and I get to the bottom of the, Teresa's secret love life, she's going to make me the happiest guy in the world. Nothing would make me happier than to start out the New Year as your fiance. That makes two of us. <laughs> Three. <laughs> I am so glad you're coming tonight. Who's your date? I told her to ask the first guy that came to mind when she thought about who she liked to be kissing at midnight. So, Sheridan, who is he? Have you asked him yet? I, I mean, I completely understand if you already have plans or if you just don't want to go out with me. But, you know, be straight with me because, I mean, I thought you'd say no anyway, but I thought, what the heck, give it a try, right? <sighs> I'd be honored to go out with you. What's going on? Sheridan just asked me out for New Year's Eve. Actually, there was a bit of a mix-up. I thought I was asking the first guy that came to my mind, but it turns out I asked his best friend. How did that happen? You don't want to know. But it's okay. I I'm sure the guy that I wanted to ask would have said no anyway. 
I mean, really, Hank, how can you stand mingling with us riffraff when you'll be hobnobbing with Sheridan Crane all night? Hey, <laughs> I won't turn into one of those guys who forgets where he came from, okay? Okay. I need some more cream in my coffee. Yeah, though. well, get it yourself, Hank. You're still one of the little <laughs> people like us. <laughs> yeah, well, for now, maybe. But Sheridan won't be able to resist my charms forever. Okay, your best friend is crazy, but <laughs> you never know. Sheridan just might fall for Hank. You know what I mean? You know, I'm glad Tabitha talked me into having the kids celebrate here tonight. They're so excited. Why not? This is the New Year's Eve's to beat all New Year's Eve's. And at their age, it's even a bigger event. I just wish I could remember some of the New Year's before I met you, Sam. Oh, maybe someday, Grace. You know, your amnesia could lift as suddenly as it hits you. Yeah, well, I'm not counting on it, Eve. What about you guys? What were your New Year's like when you were younger? How about you, sweetheart? You go first. You know what? Come to think of it, my wife never mentions the men in her life. As a matter of fact, I don't know who you spent your New Year's Eve with before you met me. You're right, Julian. I never expected to be a guest in your home. With your husband in tow, no less. Tell me he doesn't know, does he? God, no. TC can never know. Well, you know, TC, Eve's not the only one who's holding out. Sam has never told me who he was kissing all those years. Well, who says I kissed anybody? Oh, come on. I want names. You know, I bet I even know somebody. Somebody from my PTA, committee meetings. All right, then. I want to know the first woman who stole your heart. Well, what about if I told you that I don't remember anybody that kissed before I met you? <laughs> <laughs> you? I would say that is a very tactful way of not answering the question. <sighs> <sighs> Sam wants to forget how we used to be. But when he sees me in this, he won't have a choice. He'll remember and he'll want me back. I don't believe what I'm hearing, Mrs. Crane. Well, then don't listen, Pilar. If you persist in this fantasy about having Sam Bennett back in your life again, you will destroy your entire family. Yes, Father, Martin's still downstairs in the basement. You promised me you'd get rid of him, Julian. If you can't handle a perfectly simple task, I'll take care of it myself. That won't be necessary, Father. I'm just waiting until later on this evening when everyone's sleeping off their New Year's Eve celebration. Martin Fitzgerald will never be heard from again, rest assured. Basements aren't for people, Julian. For rats. That's okay, I'm not gonna be here much longer. And I'll make you and the rest of the Crane family pay for everything that you've done to me. It's for both of us. It was just delivered. What is it? It's everything we need to carry out my New Year's resolution. The Acme Company. Jimmy's heard of them before. Yes, I get all my diabolical supplies from Acme. Jimmy doesn't think that's why he's heard... Where he's heard them from. This should do nicely. Very nicely indeed. Just the ticket. <laughs> hey, Jessica. There's your sister. Okay. Hope you're here. I cannot believe what a geek Reese is. I can't believe you're really gonna give up on Miguel if things don't work out for you tonight. Believe it. 
It's just like that magazine article says, whoever is in your arms at midnight on New Year's Eve is who you're going to end up with forever. You know, it's still not too late to change your mind about going to the free skate party tonight with Ethan and Gwen. I am going, Whitney, and I plan on having a wonderful time. But Ethan thinks that you're bringing some boy that you like, so um... I'm bringing something better. My Irish luck. You see, the thing is, Teresa, you're only half Irish. I mean, how long do you think your luck is gonna last? Oh, it got me through the tree lighting ceremony, didn't it? You know, it must have, because I thought you were gonna get busted for sure that night. And I wasn't. And if fate was on my side, then why shouldn't it be with me tonight? Because sooner or later, Teresa, the truth always comes out. Well, I need to go check on my tux. If tonight goes the way I hope it does, everything, including my cummerbund, needs to be perfect. I brought my dress over so I could change here later. Great. See you at the restaurant? I'll be there. Okay, now tell me how you managed to ask out the wrong guy on the most important New Year's Eve of our lives. You wouldn't even believe it. <laughs> well, first tell me who you thought you were asking. Oh, you'll be shocked when I tell you. No, I won't. Okay. It was Louise. Louise Lopez Fitzgerald, Teresa's brother? The cup you hate? Yes, you've got the right Louise, but <laughs> no, I stopped hating him when we went to search for his father in New Mexico together. I saw another side to him. Hey, you must have. I mean, not that it matters, though. I mean, Louise probably wouldn't have gone out with me anyhow, let alone think of me romantically. Why not? Well, to be blunt, I'm rich and he's not. He has this thing about guys who marry wealthy women, thinks that they're all kept men. He's sort of old-fashioned. I think it's kind of charming, Sheridan. I mean, most men would jump at the chance to get involved with a woman who has money, not even think twice about using them. Yeah. Been there. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Did no, not mean to bring no, that no. up. It's okay. I mean, that's probably why I like Louis so much. He's not like any man I've ever known. I'm not getting this. So you asked him and he turned you down? Well, he never even heard me invite him. I was too nervous to do it face to face. So I did it through the door. Turns out that I was asking his best friend Hank to be with me on New Year's Eve. Oh, Sheridan. And of course he jumped at the chance. Pretty much. But, but it's okay. I mean, Hank is a nice guy, and I, I like being oh, with him. Oh, he's not who you dreamed of kissing at midnight. Well, I better get changed. They're having a big dance at the youth center, and I wanted to stop by before my date with Hank. Things will work out for you soon, I promise. <laughs> sure. Maybe next year. Luis. I right. thought you'd want to know. I just put a call into the station. Yeah? Any news on my father? No, well, nothing new since the first report that said Martin Fitzgerald was headed back east. Yeah, it could have been a mistake. That's what I thought myself. Why would he be so stupid to come back to Harmony when he knows he'd be arrested on sight? I'll let you know if I hear anything. Thanks a lot. Hey, Luis. You need any help setting up lights? What? Why don't you ask Chad? My man here is pulling two shifts. I mean, he's working music, lights. I didn't realize Chad was here. Oh, yeah. I mean, he did such a good job at DJing the Halloween dance. Kids would have had my head if I didn't bring him back, you know? Excuse me. Whitney, why didn't you tell me that Chad was going to be here at this dance tonight? I didn't know. Well, your sister apparently did. How long have you been here, Chad? I didn't see you come in. Nah, just a little while. Wanted to set up early. It's a big night. I know. I can't wait for midnight. Oh, I don't like this. Maybe I shouldn't let Simone come to the dance. Come on, Mom. It's New Year's Eve. It, w it would kill Simone to have to stay home tonight. You know how I feel about him. I'll keep an eye on her, okay? I promise. All right. At least one of my daughters understands that I didn't raise her to associate with that sort of young man. I know, um, I know Chad is a little rough, but, you know, I don't think he's dangerous. 
He's not like anybody that you ever knew. I have worked so hard to keep you away from boys like Jack. Boys who will say anything to get what they want. And your sister is young and impressionable. She's the perfect target for a slick street punk like Chad. She would have no idea that he was trying to take advantage of her. Well, well don't worry, okay? Because I'm gonna take care of everything. Well, thank you, sweetheart. It makes me feel much better. Please, please do not see Sam tonight. Think about what you're risking. Hmm. It'll be worth it. I can't go on living as I have. How can you say that? You want for nothing. Uh, except passion, except love. And don't tell me you don't understand, Pilar. You know what it's like to love a man and lose him. I did not choose to lose, Martin. You made a choice to marry Mr. Crane. And it was a mistake. Do I have to pay for it my entire life? I need to feel alive again. I need Sam. Sam's made a good life for himself. Well, I haven't. And I want him back. You know, he doesn't expect to see you tonight. That is the only reason he's going to this New Year's Eve party at the restaurant. How do you think he'll feel when he realizes you've tricked him? I don't care. I don't care. It'll be all right. It'll all be all right once we're together. Tonight is a new beginning of my life. The beginning of my life the way it should have been with Sam years ago. You know, you must be really proud of Eve receiving this award tonight. You know what, Sam? It came completely out of the blue. Now, you know I'm not too crazy about these black tie affairs. But in this case, I'll make an exception. As long as I know you're going to be there with your monkey suit. <laughs> Grace and I wouldn't miss this honor for Eve for anything. It'll definitely be a lot easier to take than spending another evening at the Cranes. You know what? Uh, what happened on Christmas Eve is still bothering you, isn't it? You know, I can't believe Ivan had the, had the audacity to kiss me underneath that mistletoe. I swear, if it weren't for Grace's amnesia, I couldn't clean with her. I'd tell her the story right now. Sam, what happened with you and Ivy was years ago, even before you met Grace. What, you don't think she can handle it? Grace is a very strong, independent woman in many ways. But when it comes to feeling really secure as a woman, she's a little shaky. I think it's because she lost all those early years. I mean, it makes her feel like she comes up short sometimes, even when she isn't. I just don't want to do anything right now that could possibly hurt Grace. Buddy, I understand, believe me. I don't want to be mingling with the Cranes tonight. Especially Julian Crane. You know, man, someday I will not be responsible for what I might do. What? When are you going to tell me what you got against him? Sam, he's an arrogant son of a... <coughs> Isn't that enough? Well, it is for me. But I got a feeling there's a little bit more to it than that. You want to talk to me about it? Hey, 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 look, it's up to you. Let me tell you something. I felt a whole lot better when I told you about me and Ivy. Come on, man. Tell me. You might get it off your chest. Maybe someday, Sam, but right now, man, it, it just stings too much. Whatever he did to you must have been pretty major. Major's not the word, Sam. You know, Julian's nothing but a low-life bastard in a Brooks Brothers suit. <laughs> Don't bollocks things up again, Julian. Or there'll be hell to pay. Don't worry, Father. Nothing will go wrong. I'll call you later on tonight once everything's been taken care of. I warned you not to come back to harm anymore, Miss Cheryl. You underestimated me, Julian. Bad idea. <sighs> Sorry it took so long. My mom had to talk to me. That's okay. Just tell me how do I look? Ooh, muy bonita. That's exactly what I was thinking. But I still don't think you should go to the party at the Seascape tonight. Oh. I mean, haven't you ever heard of the fickle finger of fate? You're the only fickle thing around here, Whitney Russell. You're supposed to be telling me that everything's going to work out tonight. 
Hello? Teresa, this is Gwen. Oh, hi, Gwen. I was just calling to make sure you were still planning on coming tonight. Ethan and I just can't wait to meet your boyfriend. Don't worry. I'm getting ready right now. Wonderful. See you soon, then. Okay, she's definitely on to you. Well, I guess you can't go tonight, huh? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Because when the clock strikes midnight, I'm gonna be in Ethan's arms. You're gonna be lucky if you've got arms by midnight. We wake up, Teresa Gwen is out for blood. Now I know what drop dead gorgeous means. Really? I had this dress made in New York last month. I have an idea. What if we skip this party at the seascape tonight? And do what? Elope. I'll fuel up the jet right now and we can be married in Bermuda at midnight. Ethan, that's the most romantic idea I've ever heard. Then you'll do it? You'll marry me tonight? <sighs> Ethan, I want to. I want to, but... You have to understand, it's very important to me that you realize that I'm not imagining Teresa's obsession with you. I told you the other day I believed you. You were just trying to make me feel better. Ethan, you have to see that I've been right with your own eyes. Just wish that you could drop it. But if you can't, you know, I'll do whatever it takes. Believe me, as soon as Teresa admits that you were the man she's in love with... Or proves she isn't when she shows up with her boyfriend. We can get married as soon as possible. And what are we waiting for? Let's go. Mark my words, Ethan. Teresa's gonna show up to this party alone. Mm -hmm. Ah, this isn't sharp enough yet. Jimmy just remembers where he remembers the apple company from. That's where Wiley Coyote gets all of his supplies. Who the hell is that? It's from Timmy's cartoon. You remember how Timmy said... Tell the reminded him a lot like Elmer Fudd? How could I forget? Timmy was wrong. He's m more like Wiley Coyote. He's always coming up with these wild schemes to get rid of the road winner. Just like Tells is always coming up with wild schemes to get rid of charity. If I were you, I'd quit while I was ahead. Wiley's always messing up his ideas and schemes, just like Chelsea's always messing up hers. <laughs> Jimmy just never thought of it that way. It's really funny. Chelsea should be on TV. <laughs> Jimmy was just joking. Chelsea wouldn't hurt Jimmy now, would she? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Tim Tim. You're one of my more entertaining creations. But that look on your little mug was priceless. <laughs> that was mean, Talva. Oh, you think so? I'm just warming up. <laughs> What's that for? Just put it on right now. You're going to help me tonight. Go on. But Talva! Right now! <laughs> idea what my favorite perfume might be? He's got it. Our whole room reeks of secret pleasure. Hey, Mom, please. It's my first New Year's dance and it's the millennium. Okay, but just a little bit. It's my favorite perfume. It's expensive and your father gave it to me. Okay, okay? thanks. Go check out your hair in the bathroom there. You're gonna love it. <laughs> you say so? Please, Jess, your new shoes would go so perfectly with my dress. Mm, what do you give me for them? I've heard that, Jessica. <laughs> just kidding, Mom. Uh -huh. Um, Kay, they're all yours. Just don't wear out the heels. I promise. But will you find it for me? Your closet is a disaster. <sighs> hey, you know, I think I have a perfect little clip for your hair. It's gonna look great with your dress. Cool. Here you go. Thank you so much. Oh, shoot. Now I have to do my nails over again. Oh my gosh, Miguel's gonna be here any minute. I'm not even halfway dressed. <sighs> um, <laughs> no offense or anything, but I just have to ask one question. Are guys really worth all this? Yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. 
What's that noise, Chief Bennett? That noise, Reese, is the sound of women. A whole house full of women getting ready to celebrate New Year's Eve. I'd give my life for each and every one of them. But sometimes I think living with a herd of wild buffalo would be a little more peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a good one, Chief Bennett. Yeah, well. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm counting on both you boys to have Charity and Kay back by the 1 o'clock curfew. No problem, Chief Bennett. We'll have them back in plenty of time. Look at you guys. You both look very nice this evening. Thanks. I'm just not used to wearing all this stuff, you know? It's kind of confining. <laughs> Tell me about it. Ugh. I feel like a trussed up turkey at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I rather enjoy all the formality, although I believe I've outgrown my shoes. I guess it raises a question. Are women really worth all the trouble? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Set it up over here, guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Excuse me. I'm the director here. You must have the wrong place. We didn't order any of this stuff. This is the youth center, isn't it? Yeah, sure is, meaning we don't have two nickels to rub together. Now, we can't afford fancy food like this. Thank you, I had the food sent over, Luis. You hear that, Luis? Besides being the sexiest woman in Harmony, my date's got a heart of gold, too. Considered a New Year's gift to the kids. I've really enjoyed working with them. I wanted to do something nice for the holiday. All right, well, thanks. That means a lot. I mean, to the kids, you know, they'll really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I wasn't sure if we had enough, and now. Yo, Luis, oh, you got a minute? I need to check lights and sound. Yeah, man, do your thing. I don't believe in wasting good music, and I'm not gonna see you again until the next century, so how about it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, you two. It's no fair letting Beth and me look like the only fools out here. Come on. Over there. Oh, picture time. Oh, come on. Come okay. on. Okay. Uh oh. Last shot of the new year. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my best side. <laughs> Get my best side. Are you sure you're okay with all of this going out? Oh, I don't mind, Mom. I mean, I'm going to make a fortune babysitting, so have a good well, you time. You know what? I think we should hit the road because we don't want to have the guest of honor late. Exactly. Are you going to another fancy schmancy party at the Cranes? Not tonight, Reese. And hopefully, never, ever again. Well, we'll get this evening over with. I have a few drinks. Bring in the new millennium with a couple of boring friends, make our excuses, and come home. I mean, I don't know what all the fuss is. It's just like any other night. I'll get my bag. Pilar, I hope you understand why I didn't want you down in the basement. It's none of my business, sir. Well, I'm working on a special project, and uh, I don't want the materials disturbed, so... And, uh, Pilar, tell the rest of the staff that they can have the night off. With pay. Sir? Oh, yes. It's the end of the millennium. Even they may have something to do. You too, Pilar. Thank you, Mr. Crane, but Mrs. Crane already gave me the night off so I can work the coat room at the seascape. But I'll tell the rest of the staff. I'm sure they'll be very grateful. Uh, yes, I'm certain they will be. Come, darling. What are you up to, Mr. Crane? You've never given the staff a paid night off in all the years I've been here. Is this what I thought? The walls in here are so thick, nobody can hear a thing. <laughs> and Julian Crane thinks Y2K is his biggest problem tonight.
Yo, so what's the verdict? Should I raise the music up a notch? Sounded just right to me. Yeah, me too. What do you think, Luis? What? Yeah, right. Good job, Chad. So I've still got to get dressed for the party. Should I pick you up here? Oh, don't bother. I I've got my car. I'll just meet you at the restaurant. All right. Well, I'm going to take off as soon as I finish up these last balloons. Oh, well, it'll go faster if I help. We've got a terrific girl here, Luis. Hey, look, don't let me hold you up. You know, I know the seascape party. It's the hottest millennium ticket in town. That's what they say. Yeah. To tell you the truth, I'd rather be ringing in the new year here tonight. Okay, fate. How are you gonna bail me out of this one? Oh, there's Teresa now. Hmm. And she's all alone. Just like I knew she'd be. There's no boyfriend, Ethan. Thought he was kidding. No. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. The major deal will be right with you. Thank you. Great, You're thank welcome. you. It looks great. You know, I was already excited about this New Year's, but with you getting an award, it's so much better. Oh, that's easy for you to say. I'm so nervous. Do you have a speech ready? I didn't have time. I have no idea what I'm going to say. You know, I'm sure whatever you say will be right on the money. Sammy, my girl, always says the right things. In case you haven't guessed, TC and I figure we're the luckiest two guys in Harmony. That's right. Mm, well, I think I'm the lucky one. Oh. Spending the new millennium with the man I love. Mm. Wait, wait. Why are you putting us here? There are only two of us. Oh, well, forgive me, Mr. Crane, but I was told you'd be sitting with tonight's honoree and her guests. Thank you, Henry. That'll be fine. What the hell is he talking about, honoree? No, well, it appears that Dr. Russell is receiving the Doctor of the Year award tonight. Eve Russell, for crying out loud, what's the meaning of this, Ivy? <laughs> Why are you accusing me? This is Millicent's due. Obviously, this is just part of the festivities she had planned for tonight. For God's sake. Is there a problem, Julian? I thought you were a huge fan of Dr. Russell's. After all, you did donate millions for her new pediatrics wing that she wanted at the hospital. That isn't the issue. I'm simply in no mood for surprises tonight. You owe me money, Julian. I'm gonna get it one way or another. Damn it. What is it with these rich people? Don't they believe in secret stashes? Well, well, what do you know? Even better than money. Thanks, Julian. Didn't they look like Baby New Year? But he feels like an idiot. Ah! Ah! Hush up, hush up, Timmy. It's only me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Zelda. You just really scared Timmy. Yes. Acme really did right by me this time. <laughs> if I only pay one bill next year, remind me to make it theirs. Timmy knows about... part. But what's the whole plan? Well, we're going to the youth center where Charity and Miguel are waiting to ring in the new millennium with all their little friends. But Timmy thinks that Timmy and Zelda won't blend in? Oh, well, we don't need to blend in. Everyone will think we're part of the festivities. By the time they figure out that we're not, it'll be too late. <laughs> oh, I love New Year's. When else, except Halloween, can one carry about a six-foot lethal weapon without attracting attention? <laughs> Come on, baby cakes. Wow. You look awesome, Kay. Thank you, Reese. What do you think, Miguel? You're so beautiful. Thank you. 
we're gonna remember tonight for the rest of our lives. I don't know if those two will remember tonight, but everyone else in Harmony surely will. Right this way, please. Thank you. And may I take the opportunity to offer my congratulations, uh, Dr. Russell. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Oh. Well, Grace, you're looking even more lovely than usual. And Eve, I'm so pleased for you. We just heard about your award tonight. TC, looking dashing as ever. Yeah. You too, Sam. Thank you. What? Ivy, it's wonderful to see you and Julian also. <laughs> you know, this was also last minute. We didn't know exactly who to expect tonight. <laughs> well, nor did we. Dear Millicent did the guest list. And I am thrilled that she saw fit to seat us with one another. Now we can ring in the new millennium together. <laughs> ah, Teresa, Happy New Year. Hi. So... Teresa, where's this boyfriend of yours? I mean, Ethan and I just can't wait to meet him. Is he on his way, or, or did you come here by yourself because he's already here? Why would you want to spend New Year's Eve here? I meant that I, I'd rather be with the kids. I, I've grown so fond of them since I've been working at the center, and I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun here tonight. Probably will be. Well, uh, I better go then. Yeah. Happy New Year. Feliz Año Nuevo. Bad luck, Blondie. You're running into me and knowing who I am. Now I can't let you go. Looks like we'll be spending New Year's Eve together. <laughs> Quiet. Get in and drive. We got places to go and people to see. 